Whether you're headed to the beach, the garden, your kid's t-ball game, you want to make sure to protect your skin from the summer sun. It makes a lot of sense, but you can't believe everything you read on your bottle of sunscreen. Here to help us figure out fact from fiction is dermatologist Dr. Pravija Patel. Doctor, welcome back. Good Thank to see you here on Live at Nine. When it comes to sunscreen protection, you mean sometimes uh, it may not be always telling us the truth here, or what? It's not necessarily that it's not telling us the truth. We just need to be aware of what we're buying okay. and what we're putting on our skin to protect ourselves. Okay, give us some pointers. For example, the number on the bottle, or the SPF, is a sun protection factor. That's a measure of redness. That, it, that means the higher the number mm -hmm. on the bottle, the longer you can stay outside without getting red. Okay. But a measure of redness is not a measure of DNA damage. Oh. Ah, so there is a difference there. There is a difference there. We would like for people to use a 30 plus SPF at all times, but we also need them to understand that that needs to be reapplied every two hours. Okay. And this is, is this not just when you're at the beach, but during the every day you should use the 30, just when you're out and about? Yes, and companies have become very savvy about this, actually. They've included the SPF in moisturizers, mm -hmm. in BB creams, right. in CC creams, and we're able to protect ourselves. There's a very interesting Australian study that just recently came out showing mm -hmm. that the number one thing you can do for yourself for anti-aging is to wear a sunscreen, and that'll protect you from skin cancer and from fine lines and wrinkles. Wow, that says a lot right there. What about different colors uh, of people out there do we all need the same type of protection well people with more melanin or um, darker pigments mm -hmm. uh, do need sun protection but they just we have a less of a chance of burning per se than people with less melanin okay. so I would say we all need the same amount of sun protection because we all don't want to burn but we need to understand that I think the key here is we need to reapply every two hours or everybody it will eventually burn but there again you just mentioned redness is not really what we're looking for Correct. so someone with more melanin both of you have more melanin than I do but do you have the damage even though you might not burn or does that melanin protect the melanin does protect okay so, so it's a little bit less damage okay but you still need to do. Now, Correct. what about higher than 30? I've always heard that any higher than 30, you're really not getting the added benefit. It comes in increments, and when we measure the amount of redness that's happening or how long that person mm -hmm. can stay outside as the number increases on the bottle, it's actually, it's really not worth it. Sometimes We're talking about minutes more protection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they give people a, a false sense of security too. I think the ability, correct, the ability for the body, and I know it sounds bad, to burn is telling you to go back inside. Yeah. yeah. Not continue to apply sunscreen and stay out there longer because the DNA damage is still happening. Are many of us though, doctor, taking the time to either see our dermatologist to kind of find out, you know, how we're shaping up with our skin? Is it being protected enough? Should we do this more, obviously? I would hope I would hope everybody's becoming more aware of the problem. Um, skin cancer, one in three people now are developing skin cancer, and we're also developing it as a younger generation. Mm -hmm. So we're, not, no, we're no longer talking about melanoma anymore, which is the most deadly type of skin cancer. We're talking about basal cell skin cancer and squamous cell skin cancers. And the generation that's actually developing the most right now are young women, mostly because of tanning bed use. Oh, now can those turn deadly? Do you still need to deal with them, even though they're not like melanoma? They're still carcinomas. They should be dealt with. Okay. Okay. What about um, spray tans? Uh, so, uh, not spray tans, but spray sunscreens. Um, are those as effective if they have that 30 SPF? So, I hope that we think about what we're doing when we spray our children down and realize that we're not evenly distributing mm -hmm. that protection on the skin. A lot of it's getting in the air. We don't want them to breathe it in too much either because there are chemicals in these products that we're using. Mm -hmm. So, we should be a little wary what we're doing when we when we when we get a bottle and we think it's going to be a quick fix a waterproof spray sun sunblock mm -hmm. or sunscreen i don't think anything can can protect you more than a big hat and some protective clothing but if you were to use some block i would use a thick lotion okay right. even though it's sense. harder to apply it's, it's and worth it's, it and it's more inconvenient to put it on every two hours the rule is a shot glass worth of sunblock on every extremity that means your head the shot glass for your arms a that's shot glass for each leg and your trunk and then your back. Wow. And that's a lot of sunscreen that you'll go through. <laughs> Every two hours. Every two hours. All I right. think I'm going to the mountains instead of the beach this year. That you is... may want to think about it. <laughs> Doctor, wow. thank you so much. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Thank you. Very Here's where interesting you can catch Dr. Patel.